This is a very interesting case involving a necrotic pulp on a lateral incisor and a huge granuloma. You can see this giant granuloma. In this case, I elected to do both endodontics and an apicoectomy and retrofill and graft the granulomatous site defect once I removed the granuloma. Just because there was so much infection, I wasn't sure that endodontics alone would solve the problem. I wasn't sure if the adjacent teeth were affected or not. And so I decided to do, the patient I decided to do endo and removal of the granuloma on just the lateral incisor and see how the other teeth fared. And sure enough, they were not negatively affected by the granuloma. They were still vital. So this is before and after of placing topical anesthetic. You can watch all these videos in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com. Now, the tooth is non-vital, and so it's not going to be painful, but certainly you want to anesthetize the gingival tissue where you're doing the apicoectomy. Placing a rubber dam, you can watch this rubber dam technique in the library of dentistrymasterclasses.com. I'm opening into the pulp chamber, and you can use a variety of different burrs. There's no magic burr. I'm using a small, coarse barrel diamond and a round burr. Since there's a veneer on the tooth, you want to be careful not to fracture the, the porcelain. These were actually made of porcelain. So the key is high speed, lots of water, light touch. So I'm irrigating with three parts water, one part sodium hypochlorite, and I would expect some of this purion exudate to come through the canal once we open it. You can see it's 26 millimeters, and I love the real-world endo system. And these are the different parts, the scalp file, the single file for the complete endo. I usually use these four files, they're small, medium, and large, and then I use headstrom files for the initial cleaning. This is the headstrom file and I'm just cleaning it out really well and then irrigating with the three parts water, one part sodium hypochlorite. I'm not putting pressure, I'm just putting it into the pulp chamber and then this is the headstrom file. I actually want to file through the apex of the tooth. Why? I want it to drain and I'm going to do an apicoectomy so it doesn't matter. So I actually want to overfill this canal. This is one case we actually want to overfill it. So this is a number 40 rotary file, and I'm not paying a lot of attention to the length of the, the tooth because I want to fill past the apex into that lesion and get good drainage. So irrigating... So I like to go from the 40, I use the medium, which is 25 to 40 rotary files most of the t on most teeth. Sometimes you'll use the large, and then sometimes you'll use the smaller ones. But I like to use the 40, 40 file and then come back to the 25. So go 40 very lightly as far as it will go into the canal without piercing the side and making a divot in the side of the canal and then come back to a 40. Now if it's a tiny little canal, I'll use the scalp file. Those are magic. Access the apical part of the canal, but in this case I'm not worried about the apical part of the canal. I want to file past the apical part. So that was a 35, so I've gone from a 40 to a 25 to a 20. That was a 35, and I'm irrigating, and now I'm irrigating with just lidocaine on a 30 gauge needle. And this is the, the gutta percha cone. You can see it extended past the apical part of the canal, which is what I'd like, because I want to get a I want to get good drainage through the canal and I'm going to cut the tip of the tooth off and fill it. So here you can see see the purulent exudate welling up in that tooth just pouring out of there and I'll even drain it a little while before I fill it and just put the suction right on that orifice and let it drain and I'm filling with the endo sequence a single gutta percha cone and this is going to extend through the apical part of the canal 
because I'm going to cut, as I said, I'm going to cut the tip of the tooth off. Then I'm placing some IRM in the orifice, and then we'll follow later once this is set completely with a highly filled composite. Okay, so see, we're out in, out the tip of the tooth, tip of the apex of the tooth into this giant granuloma, and I'm going to cut the tip of the tooth off about right here, the apical part of the tooth, and retrofill it. So I'm, I'm, I don't worry at all about being past the apex of the tooth. So this is an elliptical incision, and you'd like to make the incision in the attached gingiva, if possible, to the cuspid and to the central incisor. And you want it to arch, and this is just a periosteal elevator. Tip of the tooth right here. Often this alveolar crest in the anterior teeth is thin, so you can see the apical part of that tooth right there. And there's no magic burr. This is a coarse, thin barrel diamond. And when you cut the tip of the tooth off for the apicoectomy, you don't want to cut straight through. You want to angle it like this. Why? because you're going to fit retrofill that part and you can get to it if it's angled like this you can place it easier than if it's straight across like this you want to angle the cut about like this and that's easier to retrofill you see the tip of the tooth separated from the body of the root of the tooth Look at all that purulent exudate in there. And the symptoms of this patient were just pain and achiness, and she had a little fistula there. And she said it just aches all the time, just I'm sure from the pressure of the purulent exudate. I'm extending my flap a little bit. So this is a full thickness flap, obviously. Since we're not doing anything to the cuspid and the central, you want to be sure that you don't engage the roots of those teeth. So here's the tip of the tooth. Then I'm removing that giant granuloma. And many times they'll come out pretty much in one piece. It's got a definite wall. And if you curette around that wall, you can remove it, remove the entire thing in one piece. Now this is just a large spoon a large curette, and I'm just curing, curetting the remainder of that granuloma out with this large spoon. You don't want a little spoon, you want a large one. I'm making a little more access. In a perfect world, you want to cut this back so that you've got direct access to the coronal part of the granuloma. If it's tucked in under part of that root, it's sometimes hard to curette that out. So you'd, if you can keep from cutting too much of the root off, you'd like to cut the root back to the coronal part of the extent of the granuloma so you have direct access to the the lid, you might say, or the top part, the coronal part of the granuloma. It's easier to remove the whole thing. So if you have to go in behind that root with the spoon, it's harder to get all of it out. I want to be sure you understand that part. If you've got plenty of root here, you want to cut this root back to the roof or the top of the granuloma so you can curette directly and not have to try to get that spoon behind a root that's sticking uh, that's sticking into the granuloma to space. The day after this, the patient said it's sore, but oh, the pressure's gone. It just feels so much better. Now, once I've curetted it all out, the wall should be heart bone. Then I'm coming back in with Perigard or chlorhexidine on a large cotton ball 
held by cotton forceps and just scrubbing the walls. See, this is cut at an angle. So I'm taking a small round burr and just making a little cut into the tip of the gutta percha, creating a little foxhole. The hardest part is keeping this dry. And I'm using root repair material from Endo Sequence. You can use gutta percha. Some people use amalgam. I don't like amalgam because I don't like amalgam. I've used amalgam on anything in 40 years. IRM works. But this, I think, is a, is a very good material for this because it's designed for root perforations with Endo. And I've been using this for several years. Let's clean that up. It sets pretty quickly. It's biocompatible. It's water does not dissolve it once it sets. Very good material for that. So I'm placing bone graft material in the site. This is BIOS. Maxius has a good one. There's a million bone graft materials. Some people would use platelet-rich fibrin. To use platelet-rich fibrin, the patient's got to have a good vein in the antecubital fossa, which this person did not. And it wasn't critical that we use that in this situation. If, if I had extracted a tooth and was placing an implant, I think platelet-rich fibrin is a fantastic material to use either alone or with bone graft material. I'm releasing the incision a little bit more. Now, this is very important for suturing. If, you're, if your incision is in attached gingiva, you want to just open that up just a little bit right at the the bone line between the bone and the attached gingiva just so you can get your suture needle under the tissue. If you don't do that, it's very difficult to place the suture needle in this coronal part of the incision. Now, this is a membrane. Now, remember the purpose of a membrane is to give the bone a head start on the soft tissue. Soft tissue grows a lot faster than bone. So if you put this membrane over the defect with the bone graft, the bone is going to have a three-month head start on the soft tissue because you want that defect to, heat, to fill with bone and not soft tissue. So this is a 4-0 gut. So I go one, two, three away from me when I'm wrapping, pull that tight, then one toward me, pull that tight, and then one away from me, pull that tight when I'm suturing. So again, I'm going one, two, three away from me, pull it tight, one toward me, pull it tight, one away from me, pull it tight. The three makes the first wrap hold better than two. As far as antibiotics, if the patient's not allergic to anything, I'm going to put them on Keflex 500 milligrams times 15 for five days. Now, I'm probably going to give them 2,000 milligrams of Keflex an hour before the procedure. Or you can use amoxicillin. Those are my two favorites. So I'll give her, in an infection like this, I'll give her 2,000 milligrams of Keflex an hour before the procedure, hour, hour and a half before the procedure, and then 500 milligrams TID three times a day for five days. But be sure you open that just a little bit in the coronal part of the incision so you can get your suture in there. Now I'm suturing in unattached gingiva, and that's, there's no problem with access there. I just saw this lady in recall recently about, oh, it's probably been 10 years since we did this and it looks fabulous, no problem. So I'm etching the porcelain with 4% hydrofluoric acid and I'll etch for a minute or two, and rinse it off, primer adhesive, then I always blow the primer adhesive off and cure the primer adhesive before placing the filled resin if it's a direct composite don't do that with veneers but if it's a direct composite resin blow the primer adhesive off and cure it for about four or five seconds before you place your direct resin this is flowable filtech supreme then this is highly filled resin on top of the flowable i like the flowable first because it it's very wettable it 
fills the space well. Then I come back for strength and put the highly filled on top of it. Just filling in a few spaces with the flowable. And I cure the, so I cure the primer adhesive for about four or five seconds. Then I cure the flowable for 20 seconds. Then I cure the final highly filled resin for 40 seconds. There's nothing magic about that time. If any, you want to be sure you over cure rather than under cure. This is just a small chamfer, fine diamond, and a small flame shaped. And then this is a 30 fluted carbide. Checking the occlusion. You don't want the patient to be contacting on that tooth in centric occlusion. And this is just a Shofu rubber wheel to final polish. This is three weeks later. You can see how well that's healed. And that's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. I know you want to take your practice to the top tier. Subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com for an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, plus many complete comprehensive cases and many very important articles that you can only find right here. New cases are added weekly and it's only $20 a month. Subscribe now.